Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Energy Central Power Perspectives podcast. This is the show that brings together leading minds in energy to discuss the latest challenges and trends transforming and modernizing the utility industry of the future. And a quick thank you to West Monroe, our sponsor of today's show. Now, let's talk energy. My name is Jason Price, Energy Central podcast host and director with West Monroe coming to you from New York City. Once again, I'm joined with Matt Chester, Energy Central podcast producer and community manager dialed in from Orlando, Florida. Matt, we're stepping into the world of cybersecurity this week, a topic of paramount importance to the utility sector. Can you set the stage for why cybersecurity tends to be top of mind for all decision makers at utility companies? Yeah, I can do that, Jason. While every business out there these days has an eye on cybersecurity, staying secure is particularly important for the power industry. Outages caused by cyber attacks, they're not just inconvenient in the utility space, they can be dangerous. Places like hospitals, elderly care, they can't afford to be without power. And extended outages cause measurable disturbance to a region's entire economy, while unexpected downtime can cause health and safety concerns, such as during extreme heat when air conditioning is, is so necessary. So the utility industry needs more than anyone else really to, to stay several steps ahead of any potential threats or bad actors and, and doing so is indeed a full-time job. That's right, Matt. And we actually have a guest today, one of those people whose job is to stay on top of these critical issues. We have the privilege of welcoming to the podcast booth, Hong Se, the Chief Information Officer at the City of Roseville in California. Hong has served as CIO for Roseville for over 12 years, meaning he's been at the helm during some particularly exciting advances in the digital world for utilities, but also some high-risk developments on the side of bad actors seeking out cyber attacks. As utilities are always looking for the edge to keep customers secure, assets protected, and the grid humming, we're excited to hear some tips, experiences, and best practices based on his extensive experience. So with that, Let's bring him on. Hong Se, welcome to today's episode of Energy Central's Power Perspectives podcast. Hello, Jason and Matt, and thank you everyone else for listening to this podcast. And thank you for the invites and the quick intro today. Hong, being an East Coast guy, I have to admit, I wasn't too familiar with Roseville. So to level set, can you give us an overview of how big Roseville is, how many customers you're serving, and the role you play as CIO at Roseville? Absolutely. I have a short story out here for you. The city of Roseville was incorporated in 1909. We have a population of about 150,000. Roseville is about 16 mile northeast corner of Sacramento, which is the state capital of California. And the greater Sacramento area is home to about 2.6 million people in this region. And we're right in the middle of San Francisco and Lake Tahoe. Roseville is actually not a stranger to anyone. We have been ranked the best city to live in California by the Money Magazines in 2020. We're also ranked the fifth best place to live in U.S. if you work from home in 2021. We're also ranked recently by the eighth fastest growth city in the nation by U-Haul. And we're also ranked as the 15 best places to work in technologies, and especially from the Smart Assets magazines. Most importantly, the last 10 years total, we have been ranked the top 10 digital cities by the government technology magazines. The list goes on, including the safest and wealthiest cities for Roseville. Roseville is a full service city, just in case if anyone wasn't aware. Our program consists of public works, which is uh, transportation and transit buses. We also serve the public with emergency, police, fire, and paramedic. Parks and Rec's library is known to all out there as the nation number one parks department. And our planning and development services, and most importantly, government affair and 24 by 7 utility services, which is electric, water, wastewater, solid waste, and all of our internal service department. I have been serving as the chief information officer for the city of Roseville for the last 12 plus years. In my past 33 years of working experience, I was CIO in several Texas state agency and also at private entities. In my free times, this is one of the things I love to tell people, is I serve on the Sacramento CIO and CTO Forum, and I also enjoy my time serving as the MESAC president. 
which stands for Municipal Information System Association of California. MISAC has a passion of about 330 California agency, which consists of about 1,500 CIO, IT director, manager, management specialists responsible for local government, utilities, and special district technology services. That's a long story, cut it short, and two minutes out there for you, Jason and Matt. <laughs> Appreciate that, but that's an impressive introduction, no doubt. It's interesting that you're a somewhat smaller city, which perhaps would reduce the amount of cyber threats you'd potentially face compared to, uh, I don't know, an, an IOU. Like in your region, you have PG&E. But as you noted, you're also a full service utility. So not just power, but also water, transit, and other services. So when you speak to your peers and your counterparts at other utilities, do you find the challenges you face are unique or in many respects, same regardless of the makeup of the utility? In fact, that's an interesting question that you asked, Jason. Uh, all cybersecurity challenges are the same across all 16 critical infrastructure sector today identified by the U.S. government. Whether you're in communications, healthcare, transportation, you know, water, food, agricultural, financial, manufacturing, chemicals, we're all facing the same risks and compliance standards. Maybe perhaps different reporting agency for electric, would be NERC and FERC, and for water agency will be the Homeland Security. How about as a follow-up, do you approach cybersecurity the same for all the municipal functions that you operate, or must the strategy and the skill set for protecting the electric grid call for different skill sets for water, for the transit, or other services that Roseville operates? As a full service city, we do treat all our departments the same. Our agency has the same multi-pronged approach, not one silver bullet that we'll be able to tackle all. But our primary focus is on 3P, right? People and process and performance. So we have defensive technologies, layers of uh, layers of defense and general governments in our public safety and also more importantly in public utilities area. We also continuously monitor ransomware denial of services attack. We also, on a regular basis, we collaborate with uh, Homeland Security, State of California Office of Emergency Services. We're all part of the multi-state power and also water ISAC group. Most of the things that we do every day today is, is to make sure that we're continuously scanning our network, making sure there's no vulnerability in place. On a year-to-year -year basis, all of our groups, general governments, utilities, we perform penetration testing. And most importantly, we're very, very actively involved in legislative influences, both at the state level and also at the federal level. And last and final, the most important thing, all three groups in our city, Roseville, has cyber insurance coverages. So at the end of the day, even though we have multi-pronged approaches, we treat all of our entire organization the same way. When we were planning for this podcast, you had mentioned your philosophy and strategy around cybersecurity and the principles of the three Ps. Why don't you take a moment and share with our audience what you mean by that? Absolutely. So the three Ps stand for people process and performance, like I mentioned uh, just a little bit ago. On the people side is to make sure that we are all involved in security practices, continue to raise the level of awareness and training, making sure that your executive responding the right way and embrace the simple mindset that's called security is everyone businesses. That's the approach that understanding that all technologies, even though they're connected, but it needs human being to advance the technologies out there. So that's the people side. The second P is about the process. So we align all of our security practices to match standards, such as the National Institute of Standard and Technology, which is NIST. But we also have European customers and businesses that is in Roseville. So to some extent, we also have to you know, live with the ISO, which is International Organization for Standardization out there. And the goal of the process is to address the security gap by continuously looking at our assessments on a year-to-year -year basis and also compare against our peers, right? So that's the process levels out there. On the last P, which is performance, most of the people always think that it's about technologies. At the end of the day, your organization has to deliver. But many organizations struggle with trying to secure too much data or containing too much data and doesn't realize that if you don't need those data, you don't really need to have those in your organization. At the end of the day, we focus on our technologies on security analytics and next generation firewalls and artificial intelligence to help us to protect and control our cybersecurity incidents more efficiently. So again, it's about people, process, and performance, and they all three line up together. That's great. 
dig a bit further about cybersecurity. So, you know, you certainly have a heightened awareness around the importance of cybersecurity at utilities, and you're practicing that at Roseville. But we still see a lot of organizations fall short in terms of preparation. Why do you think that is? And, and what advice would you give to those who are falling behind the curve? So this is actually an interesting question. The way that I look at it is there are two types of companies in the world, right? One is those that have been breached and know about it and is actively trying to protect against it and put some remediation process into it. The second type of companies in the world is that those have been breached and it's not knowing anything about it out there. So the advice that I will give to people is that cybersecurity is everyone business. It is a team sports out here. If you see something, say something out there. It takes a whole nation, a whole country to act together as a whole to defend our organizations and the community. You certainly have a, an impressive record at Roseville um, and you have not succumbed to any cyber incidents. And a lot of it has to do with your diligence. But, you know, not every utility has been as fortunate as you. So from a wider standpoint, you know, Colonial Pipeline with the ransomware attack, the Log4J log vulnerability and others. When you see incidents at other organizations, what are you able to learn from them? This is a good question. At the end of the day, we all have to keep in mind that there is no such thing as perfect protections, right? The business model that we embrace here in Roseville and also a lot of organization as well too, is to make sure that utility, public safety and any services that we deliver continue its delivery services and to accept the spectrum that what is appropriate risk. If you have too much of a security, your businesses may not be able to perform well. If you have too little of a security, you may get infiltrated and brings down your network and therefore no business can be running out there. The goal is to build a sustainable cybersecurity program that balance the need for all of us in our organization to protect against to continue running our business. Yeah, and no doubt that the goalpost in your case is constantly moving. So it's always a challenge to stay ahead. So, you know, there's always new technologies, new threats, new mitigation processes to build in and a lot more. As a leader of your organization, how do you make sure that your people stay on top of it and not get complacent and treat the new threats as seriously as they need to be? As uh, cybersecurity leaders, we have to create our message of influence because security is a new culture, right? Since pandemics, remote, working from home, and we need to make sure that the business continue to take place because of that part of the security culture. Continue building resiliency, diversity, and preparing our organization to continue to be smarter and future ready. Thank you for that, Hong. We're going to give you the last word, but before we get to that, we want to shift gears for a moment to what we call the lightning round, which gives us an opportunity to meet you, Hong Fei, the individual, not Hong Sei, the leader of Roseville and its cybersecurity. So we're going to give you five questions, and you respond with either one word or phrase. Are you ready? I am ready. Fantastic. Do you prefer a dinner out or a home-cooked meal? It depends. What superpower would you choose to have? In this case, the power to remove and block cyber attack instantaneously. What's your favorite way to unwind after a long day? Relax, enjoy sitting next to my better half, listening to her, how she play her tennis, and how the kids are doing for the day. What career path do you envision for yourself when you were growing up? You would never imagine this one, chemical engineering. And what are you most passionate about? In this world, it is all about people today, connecting the dots for our team and helping them to understand what we do that impact our community and our organizations. Nicely done. You've made it through the lightning round. Now you're speaking to your peers in the industry. We want to give you the last word. So what, what piece of advice would you hope that they take away from today's conversation? I would sum it up in three little statements out here. One. Cybersecurity is more than a matter of information technology or operational technologies or business technology. As the cybersecurity leaders too, we are passionate about creating our message of influence because security is our culture that we need the business to take place and become part of the security culture itself. And third, none of the technologies out there in the world, especially one connected to the internet, is unhackable. Security is a moving target itself making sure that we're able to deal with it and work through with frequent changes 
And a leader has to be flexible and adaptable to our team, understanding that things are going to happen. Thanks for sharing those words of wisdom. I know that there's a lot more we can learn from you, so perhaps we'll just need to get you back on for a future uh, podcast. But in the meantime, hopefully we'll see you in the comments section on energycentral.com to follow up with our listeners who will want to learn more. But for now, thanks so much for your time joining us today and all the fascinating insights. Thank you, Jason, and thank you, Matt, for having me today. I just want to take this opportunity to give a huge uh, shout out to the entire Roseville team for making the city as one of the best cyber safe city to work, live, and play with in. You can always reach Hong through the Energy Central platform where he welcomes your questions and comments. We also want to give a shout out of thanks to the podcast sponsor that made today's episode possible. Thanks to West Monroe. West Monroe works for the nation's largest electric, gas, and water utilities in their telecommunication, grid modernization, and digital and workforce transformations. West Monroe brings a multidisciplinary team that blends utility, operations, and technology expertise to address modernizing aging infrastructure, advisory on transportation electrification, ADMS deployments, data and analytics, and cybersecurity. Once again, I'm your host, Jason Price. Plug in and stay fully charged in the discussion by hopping into the community at energycentral.com. And we'll see you next time at the Energy Central Power Perspectives Podcast. <music>